Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Zing This. You got Zing me. This. You got me, Zinger. And I'm Ellie. And we've got some, of course, as always, what do we have to talk about at the beginning of the shows? News, news, news. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> All right. So with that. Yes. Since we just had our Star Wars episode, why don't we start off with that? Which, if you haven't listened to, by the way, there is the new Star Wars episode. Yes. One, The Phantom Menace. We discuss it. It's awesome. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> so, with that... Hey, do you have some news about Jar Jar? Yes, there is actually some news about Jar Jar Binks. Apparently, one of the new books is going to reveal what happens to the Gungan. Hmm. But, I'm not going to discuss that today. Because we are going to have a bonus episode of our Star Wars special that is there for that exact reason. Yes, the, the miscellaneous. Yes, there will be a miscellaneous <laughs> episode, and we will discuss it then. Okay. So, even though I'm sure everyone wants to know what happened to that Gungan. Inquiring minds want to know. We will discuss it at a later time for you guys. But there is more than just the Gungan news. There is a course that has been revealed through the translation of The Last Jedi... That it's plural. Dun, dun, dun. Yes, due to it being translated into other languages with how English works versus other languages work, it has been revealed that the last Jedi is referring to plural Jedi. Jedi can be singular or plural. And it has been confirmed that it is <laughs> not singular. So interesting. Yeah. That on, that, interesting. on that note, if you did see our collage this week in the bottom corner, there was a picture of Mel Finn. Hmm? Oh, sorry. No, uh, there was a picture of Finn. Ray and Poe Damrick. Okay. And Ray seems to have her hair done up a different way. Oh. Which is interesting, but I think more interesting is if you see Finn, he's looking like he's wearing some sort of Jedi robes, possibly. <gasps> what? Now, these images, I believe, are for a toy that's coming out. So I find that kind of interesting that he might be another Jedi. I mean, he did wield a lightsaber, but it's been shown that that's not a. 100% if, if you're a Jedi or not. So that's definitely something that is um, interesting with that. So I guess moving on to more marketing news. Okay. This is just something fun. I mean, you've, you've, you've watched them, haven't you? The Halo 2. I mean, the Halo Wars 2. Oh, they're hilarious. The, the two, the one where he's... The, <laughs> Car salesman one's the best. The, the car salesman one, it's, it's, of course, the two, you know, the chieftain and the captain yes. kind of butting heads with each other and they each describe their strategies on how to take out the other one. I think that this is really great. Halo has always done a really cool job with live action trailers. Mm -hmm. And this one of course isn't showing a lot of action from the game. But right. It's 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 fun. It it's it's it made me laugh for both of them. The used car one's really funny. Um the other one is they're on a plane. Commanding officer moves his arm and the chieftain moves his <laughs> arm over and they go through this whole like diversionary tactics to get it back yeah the dynamics so that's that's something i really enjoy about the halo series and, so and i would like to say to our listeners that um just in case you don't remember halo wars is not the way halo is normally played it, it's a real-time strategy yes, game and so. i actually really enjoyed the last i one. did too i played all the way through it so. a lot of people complained because they said it's not a good rts Mm -hmm. Like true RTS fans are like this isn't that good, but I I personally enjoyed it because I'm like I'm not a super big RTS fan, but it has enough that I feel it it brought somebody in who's not super big into it and let me kind of feel like a commander and everything. So right. I definitely can't wait for the new one to come out. <clears throat> Ellie, what's that up in the sky? Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's DC news. Oh. Because apparently every week we have to discuss what's going on in the DC it's exciting. film universe. They well, like to keep us on our toes. Well, I'd like to say that, you know, the other week I did make a announcement about... Oh, it's face palming. I'm ready. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I made an announcement about the director, the new director for Batman. <laughs> Well, if you missed that announcement, don't worry about it, because apparently <laughs> they don't have a director anymore for it. Oh, and, and the choices are getting better and better. So, who knows what's going to happen with that. I'm sure next week I'll have another update discussing that. Why don't but, you tell everybody who one of the choices could be? Oh, no, 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 no. That's for Suicide Squad 2. 
Right. Oh, I'm getting it mixed up. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes. So apparently somebody who has been listed. <laughs> it's so crazy. <laughs> listed as a possible director or they're interested in or he's interested in or something of around. It's, it's, yes. it's, it's hard to get your facts straight with this DC stuff. Mel Gibson <laughs> apparently has wants something to do or they want him to have something to do. I'm pretty sure it's he wants to have something to do with the Suicide Squad yeah. too. Well. And he's directed some stuff that's been pretty well received. And he's crazy. So, I mean, there's that. It's, it's a win-win right there. It, it is. <laughs> so that's definitely... Do you, do you think if he directs it, he's going to want to do a cameo? Uh, well, why wouldn't you? <laughs> that is true. I'd want to do a cameo. Exactly. Awesome. Well, with that, we have promised to read this this month. Yes. And it was And on- you all better have gone out and bought it and read it. And if not, go out and buy it now and read it. Yes. Go, go. Stop stop your podcast and go just, buy it. Yes, pause it and read it because it won't take you long because it's a page turner. We actually did an interview with the co-creator and writer of Copperhead. Yes, it was awesome. Surprise. We did an interview with Jay Ferber. And we will be having that after the break. So we're excited about yes. that. It's one of our first interviews. So we're really excited. Um Quick side note, though, on a technical (laughs) side of things, if our audio sounds a little bit weird in this episode, about five minutes prior to, about five minutes before we recorded, I finally got our mixer working again. Yeah, we had some technical difficulties. Yes, got 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 some new equipment, and the mixer was not one of the new equipment, and apparently it did not appreciate it that so. Everything's working now. Audio might be a little weird for this episode, but we promise I'll continue to work on it. Yes. So we apologize for the audio being a little wonky on this episode. So with that, we're going to go to a break. And when we come back, it's interview time for Read This. Yes. On Zingness. Woo. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Zingness. You got me, Zinger. And I'm Ellie. And we have a very special guest with us. Yay. The author of the author and creator of Copperhead. How you doing, guys? Doing great. And it's and it's this is Jay Ferber. Ferber. Okay. I, I, I was afraid to pronounce it. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to butcher it like everyone does my name. So let me let him get it. I've been, I'm completely used to it. <laughs> no problem. Awesome. Well, we're having you on because we've read the first volume of your book and we want our listeners to sort of get an idea of, you know, what was behind the creation of this book and what goes into, you know, being a writer of a comic and also of television because you also have that to your credit as well. Yes, I, uh, I wear many hats. <laughs> yeah, you, you definitely do. So um, I guess we're going to start, I mean... The book, we both read it. Um, yes. I, I finished it, I think, in one sitting. I thought it was a phenomenal... The first volume was phenomenal. It was Thank a you. great... Def, definitely a great read. Um, Ellie, your thoughts on it real quick? Um, yeah, it didn't take me very long at all either. I just... I love the way that it just... It went so quickly. I wanted to keep turning the pages as quick as awesome. I could because I couldn't wait to see what was going to happen next. Thank you. You're welcome. And um, I guess, uh, Ellie, if you want to start um, with the first question leading into the main character, you were very, very yes. interested in some of the inspiration for um, that. Well, yeah, actually, um, being that I am a female and a mother, um, I was very interested in, um, if you could just elaborate on why you chose to have your main character as a female and, and a mother. In, 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 a, in this kind of setting, it's, it's interesting that you chose a female, you know, for that. Yeah, it's, uh, I honestly, you know, I, I should point out first, first and foremost that I am the co-creator of the book, that artist Scott Godleski is a, a true co-creator of this mm-hmm. project with me. Um, I brought the initial idea to him, which was a, just a, a, an old West town populated by aliens. Uh, and I knew I wanted to play with Western archetypes, but I don't think it was until Scott got involved that we started batting around the ideas about kind of who the lead character would be. And I believe Scott referenced Jaws of all things about you know <laughs> Sheriff Brody 
and and you know that as a kind of idea and i honestly don't recall whether it was my idea or his or just uh you know uh uh if we hit on it at the same time to, to make the, the lead character a woman and then to also make her a single mother. Uh, I honestly don't recall whose idea it was, but it just felt right. Uh, and just a, a question, not so much of why, but why not? You know, right. it, uh, the, the default for that kind of character is always a guy, you know, right. the, the yeah. male sheriff. And we decided to, to just mix things up and, and make her a human and a, a, a woman and a, a mother uh, but still very, very flawed, uh, you know, in, in all aspects. You know, she's a cop, but she's got some uh, prejudices and kind of a short temper. And uh, But at the same time, she seems to be a very committed mother to her son and right. is able to kind of compartmentalize those two roles fairly well. Well, excellent. I mean, thanks for that. Like I said, thanks for that um, response. And I, I just want to know that reading it myself, so... That was definitely really cool to to get that, and actually I had that question too. But Ellie, Ellie said she wanted that question because she's like, I have more <laughs> right to ask it than you do. <laughs> so you mentioned that you know the whole idea started out with you. You had the archetypes there. You you wanted to have the archetypes of a western, and yes. reading it, it does seem like there is a lot of you know you don't really need to know the backstory on certain characters immediately because they sort of jump off as. You know, this, this this rich guy is obviously a rich, you know, billionaire who doesn't care and wants, you know, to do what he wants to do. So it was very cool the way that you wrote that. And I th just thought that was very interesting, the way you utilized, you know, a lot of pre-existing stuff in the comics. Yeah, thanks. You know, we're, we're definitely trying to use archetypes as a kind of shorthand, but at the same time, then try there's to a deeper... sub subvert them yes. and, and, yeah, you know, peel them back in layers a bit and... Uh, we are, you know, Hickory, the the the, the rich guy in town mm -hmm. you referenced, is 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 definitely the one at at in the first two volumes at least who has the least number of layers. I mean, he is he, he appears just as as written as just this rich asshole, and uh, <laughs> we will we will uh, in time kind of humanize him and and get inside his head uh, and see just what else is going on there besides that surface level appearance. Well, awesome. Awesome. And I'm sure like once people read the first volume and get into it more, you'll, they'll definitely discover more that has, you know, the more that has to go on with these characters. Um, Ellie, you have a, another, I do. I know this is silly. How do you pronounce the deputy's name? <laughs> because I'm like, uh, boo. <laughs> I, I, I pronounce it. Boudrox to Finicus. That <laughs> is a tongue twister. Bless you. I <laughs> yes, thank you. I I really worked backwards on this one. I wanted I knew I wanted it seemed to be Boo, and then I just constructed a ridiculously convoluted name to justify why people would shorten it to Boo. Oh no, uh, it's great. So I, I I I think at this point I can spell it by memory, but a lot of times in the first few issues, I would have to go back and look and see how I spelled it. To, oh, to I'm sure. Well, and and I just um, I just wanted to ask that just because I love the dynamic between <laughs> Bronson and him, um, and and just the whole just in one of the first few pages when he has the sign and and she's like I mean and he says with two F's and it they keep yeah. kind of bouncing <laughs> back and forth. It's just it's really funny. I love that. Just that little part is just really funny. Thanks. That that is all uh, Scott Godleski. I, I believe <laughs> he just put in the misspelled sheriff, and then I ran with it and, and made it a thing. Uh, but yeah, it's just uh, he contributes so much to the book. It's uh, uh, all due credit to him on that. Okay, awesome, great. awesome. Well, great to know. I mean, we, we may have to get him on to talk about volume two at some point. Then <laughs> absolutely. But um, I, I guess some other questions, you know, I have is what got, I, I, this is kind of going more broader out now. Mm -hmm. What got you into writing and in particularly comics and then of course television as well? Uh, I just, as a kid, I grew up just on a steady diet of comics and television and not a bad uh, diet to have, by the way. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, and always wanted to be a storyteller. I knew that much. Uh, for a long time in, in my teens, I thought I wanted to be a comic book artist. And I would write and draw my own comics in, in junior high and high school. And then 
in college realized that I, I when I was exposed to really being an art major, I was an art major as a freshman and realized that I really just didn't have the uh, the discipline uh, and or skill. I had some basic rough talent, I think, but I really didn't have the discipline to to really commit to it. I, I was too uh, eager to get to the next thing. I, I couldn't spend all day on a on a drawing of a bowl of fruit. It, it just, <laughs> my, my, I, and I realized that what I really liked about storytelling was the writing, not the art. Mm-hmm. And then I kind of switched gears and, you know, wrote short stories and, and that sort of thing. And, and then, uh, after college made some friends, uh, who were, uh, getting into comic book writing at the time. And I just kind of followed them into it. Uh, and then years later, uh, some other friends were moving from comics to television, and I thought I've I've got to give that a try as well. That uh, I'm, I'm such a TV fan that I've I've got to roll the dice there, and that seems to have worked out well. And I've been able to kind of juggle both back and forth, and kind of keep one foot in each pond. So speaking of keeping one foot in each pond, you're of course you know still doing the Copperhead. Uh, continuing on with that story, what are you doing in television right now that our listeners could take a look at? I'm a writer on a show called Zoo that is a CBS summer series. Mm-hmm. It yeah. runs every summer. I think it usually starts in June uh, and then runs for 13 episodes. Uh, and we are now currently writing and shooting the third season. So we'll we'll have a new season up in either late May or, or sometime in June. Uh, and the first two seasons are available on Netflix uh, to be binged, should you so desire. Oh, we, uh, but we will binge it's, away. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's based on a James Patterson novel, and it's the the high concept is it is animals uh, all across the world starting to rebel and and unite against humanity, and a, a small team of of specialists come together to try to figure out what's happening and why, and and try to you know. Um, reverse it if possible all right so you've written so so you're currently writing the zoo what other shows that our fans might have heard of or know of that you have written for as well sure uh my first show was uh, a show on the cw uh, a few years ago called ringer which starred sarah michelle geller uh formerly buffy the vampire slayer uh and that, that show ran for one season. There's 22 episodes. It's, uh, she plays twin sisters, and it's a real kind of noir thriller about one sister impersonating the other and people trying to kill one or both of the twins. And it, it's super twisty, turny, and a lot of fun. Uh, and that, I believe, is also on Netflix. Um, after Ringer, I moved on to another CW show called Starcrossed that oh, lasted yeah. for 13 episodes and was a... Uh, kind of a sci-fi teenage thriller, I guess. It, it was sort of Romeo and Juliet with yeah. a human and an alien. Uh, and uh, and that was a lot of fun, too. That's also up on Netflix. 13 episodes. Yeah, I've seen that one. I like that one. Yeah, thanks. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, like I said, we, since, since you wear those both hats, we wanted to kind of discuss the TV with you real quick. Um, sure. I've also written some other comics, too. Um, if you wouldn't mind, you know, what are some of the comics you've written that are that you know our fans might have already been reading or have read before? Sure, uh, I mean it's a pretty long list. Um, <laughs> I'll just hit some of the highlights. I, I broke in at Marvel in DC and, and wrote. And this was back uh, I don't know seventeen years ago or so. Uh, I wrote. I did a. Uh, I wrote the revival of New Warriors, so not the first series, but the second one. Uh, I wrote. I had a stint on Generation X. Uh, I did some. I did a stint on Titans at DC, um, Go Titans. and then. But most of my work has been at Image, where I've done. I had a long-running book called Noble Causes, that was a superhero soap opera. Uh, I had another superhero book there called Dynamo Five. Uh, I have a, a kind of a crime noir book called Near Death. Um, uh, what else? Uh, a new trade paperback that just came out from Image. Uh, that I wrote uh, it was called Gemini, which is about a uh, uh, kind of a superhero who is who, who doesn't know that he's a superhero. He's an average guy who gets kind of programmed by a secret agency to become a superhero and carry out missions for them, uh, although he never knows that he does this. Uh, and that trade just came out uh, about a month or two ago. Awesome. Um, oh, okay. Had been a miniseries years ago, but we finally 
put it out in trade paperback form called Gemini. Uh, those are those are kind of the high points, I think. Awesome. Well, since you've written so many different characters over the years, who were some of your favorite ones to write for? Like, or uh, boy, um, I guess. Uh, in the in the grand scheme of things, I'd always prefer writing characters I created as opposed to characters that were at Marvel and DC. Yeah. But that said, uh, I, I was really lucky because I was as a f- superhero fan. I was always uh, I was a big fan of the Teen Titans and a big fan of the New Warriors, and I got to write both those books. Um, so just those two groups of characters were a lot of fun to write, uh, and I feel very lucky to have gotten to write them uh, so early in my career. It was a real uh, a good fortune. Um, uh, and then in terms of my own characters, I, I really do enjoy Clara and Boo and Copperhead. Those two, <laughs> I could just put in a room together and, and have them bicker about things and, and have a, a lot of fun with that. Well, that's awesome. Um, well, speaking of um, Copperhead again, I I did want to tell all the listeners um, what's really good about this, the, well, the volume one, um, is I like the way you have a lot of clips in there that really, like, I can't wait to find out more. Like, when they showed Boo, and he's trying to jump off, uh, um, as a, I think it's when a building. Cha- yeah, yeah, he's, he's chasing. chasing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> yes. and he's having these, like, flashbacks. Yeah. I really want to know, you know, what's next. And so, I, I like the way they have that kind of stuff in the book, because it really makes the readers want to get the next volume and get the next volume. So I thought that was a really good flow. And like, it's, it's very, I don't know how to describe it. It's just that, that really gets me when it, when you have little snippets like that, it's just a little bit, just enough to tease you and make you want more. Thank you. That's, that's the idea. That's the whole goal. Uh, and, and I, I will say that the first two volumes ask a lot of questions and introduce a lot of those kind of elements, those right. hints at backstories, uh, the third volume does that as well. The third, the third volume, we, we did, we did ten issues. So the first volume is the first five issues. Second volume is the second five, uh, and then we had a long hiatus. And the the book starts up again in March. March eighth, issue eleven comes out, uh, which will be the first issue in the third volume. So we'll do four issues. It'll then be collected into a third volume. Anyway, that the the upcoming story arc uh, kind of raises some more questions, and then the fourth arc which I'm working on now, we finally start to really dive into the answers. We, we really finally reward the readers and, and reveal just what happened to Clara. Why did she come to Copperhead? What's this yes. mysterious past she has? I and, and all of that wait. will be revealed. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. It's, it's a lot of fun to, to kind of dole out and then pay off, right. hopefully in a satisfying way. And the, and the doctor, too. He he mm. <laughs> he kills me the way he's just so, <laughs> I don't know, you can tell that he's got a lot of history there, and he just, I, I, I can't wait to find out more about him as well. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's another fun one to write. I, I like <laughs> Doc Mosley a lot. Awesome. Um, and you did mention that the new issue will be out in March, you said? Yes, March March 8th. Yes. Awesome. So I so everyone, you know, make sure to go to your local comic book store and, you know, definitely ask them for that. Is there a, is there a way to get it directly mailed to you or anything? Uh, you can uh, there are various comic book webs or comic book stores online that that, that do mail order. Uh, you can I think image comics themselves also offer a subscription service now awesome uh so if you just go to their website imagecomics.com you can either uh, you can uh, look into the subscription service and you can also buy digital copies directly from image to read on your devices if you choose to consume your comic books that way all right excellent um all right i i got um kind of one final wrap-up question for you if that's okay I mean, of course. And, and then, of course, after we're done with this, if you want to plug anything that you haven't already talked about or, you know, just tell everyone the best ways to find you, we'll go over that. But sure. my question was this. Since there's been a huge surge of, you know, comic book characters going on to TV, Netflix having, you know, characters on there, Hulu is supposed to be getting some stuff, movies and everything. If you had to choose a character that you don't feel has been represented well enough in television, who would you want to see make that leap? Now, of course, I know that you want to say Copperhead, so we're going to assume that, <laughs> that you said that one. 
But who just else? In, in in terms of a character that I have no involvement with, just just strictly just one as a that fan? yeah, just one that as a writer that if you got the mm. opportunity to bring it to help bring Let's it to television, see. boy, or just one that you're um, a fan of that that you'd like to see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think, and just off the top of my head, just strictly as a fanboy, without giving it a ton of thought. Uh, I really like Moon Knight from Marvel. Ooh. I think oh, okay. could could make a cool kind of crime drama, uh, cool Netflix show would fit right in with their kind of stable of stuff they're doing. That that yeah, would work really well. Yeah, with the Defender really well. series. Oh, yeah. different. Yep. That that's actually a really good one. I didn't. Yeah, he's got a great look, and he's you know he's grounded enough. It wouldn't require a ton of special effects. Uh, oh yeah. And yeah, there's there's potential there. I think. Awesome, awesome. Well, I was not expecting that answer, so that was definitely, a, definitely yeah. a good one, but I mean, what I wanted to thought of. Um, thank you. So we just want to thank you once again for being on yes, and you know discussing, you so discussing the industry with us and with our fans. Um, if they want to find out more about you, what is the best way to do that? I think the best way is to just find me on Twitter. It's just at Jay Ferber, at my name. Uh, I'm I'm fairly active on there and and am very uh, approachable, uh, and uh, yeah, just just look me up. Awesome. Well, once again, Jay, thanks for being a part of our read this segment on Zingness. Um, we will see you guys after the break. This is Zingness. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Zing This. That was a great interview, wasn't it? We, we yeah. want to just extend another great thanks to Jay for, for being a part of this and everything. So and, nice, yes. And, and and definitely letting us know a little bit more behind-the-scenes stuff with, yeah, that was with really Copperhead. Cool. So I'd say maybe in a few months we might do Volume 2. And apparently we got Volumes 3 and 4 to look forward to as well yeah. down the road. So So definitely, once again, thank you. A great thanks to him and you know i hope you all go out and enjoy that that graphic novel because it's it's definitely one that i picked up and i'm not kidding i finished it in one sitting yeah he did so, <laughs> i was a witness so with that um ellie you you were kind of at something this weekend i did i was at katsukan um it's a anime and japanese culture convention um really really a lot of fun it's one of my favorites and near our area um but yeah and i'm sure at that you probably saw some people cosplaying correct just a few <laughs> and you got some pictures that we'll try to post some of yes. those up and everything soon on our twitter or instagram but if you're into cosplaying and you know stuff like that mm -hmm. Uh, I, I have a, actually a recommendation of something to check out. Who's that? It is a podcast called Tales from the Fandom. Okay. And he does stuff to where he um, interviews people that do cosplay. He interviews people that are just huge fans of stuff. And it would just be, it, he's he's a great guy. He helped us out recently with um, the Star Wars episode. He has a comment that we're going to read in a second. Yay. But definitely check him out if you're into, you know, different fandoms and stuff because he yeah. talks to a ton of different people and it would definitely, you know. Well, we, and cosplay is a huge, huge thing. So. Bingo. So it would, if you're into that or you mm -hmm. just want to know more about it, check out his podcast. Once again, that is Tales from the Fandom. Okay. And he had a comment on our most recent episode. Oh, let me read it. Well, our most recent Star Wars special yes. on episode one. So if you haven't listened to that, go check it out. And as for the comment. Yes. So Tales from the Fandom wrote, uh, really enjoyed getting to listen to all of your thoughts about episode one. I haven't seen it in years, and it was definitely an eye opener, and parentheses, ear opener, to head as much positive praise, uh, to, he to hear as much positive praise as you three gave it. Uh, as far as the machete watch style, if you search the internet, you can find the first three episodes edited into one called Star Wars Turn to the Dark Side. Episode one is all about five or six minutes. It's a neat way to watch the prequels. Loved the comment about the N64 pod racing game. 
so true. Also, episode one has us some epic Jedi characters as well as Duel of the Fates, one of my favorite pieces of Star Wars music, and one of the best lightsaber fight scenes. Looking forward to the review of Attack of the Clones. And that will be out sometime mid-March. Yes. And thanks again for that comment. Oh, yes, Um, it's awesome. So... A way to my heart is comments and five-star reviews. (laughs) On iTunes. Yes. But another thing I just wanted to point out real quick is we might need to discuss this, this turn to the dark side. Yeah. Possibly in one of the extra Extra. episodes of Star Wars that we're going to have to where we kind of, you know, take from, from the expanded universe. I think I could justify us looking into this for that. Oh, yeah, definitely. That would fit right in. So thanks again. That podcast, once again, is Tales from from the the Fandom. Fandom. Mm -hmm. So thank you again for that awesome comment on our Facebook page. Yeah, and I can't stress enough, please, listeners, we would love to have more comments. We'd love to respond back to you. So, you know, if please talk to us. (laughs) We love love it, and so we, we would definitely welcome it. And also, the five-star reviews helps us out greatly to get us, of course, more attention on iTunes and to hopefully get us more listeners so we can grow our fans out yes. more and everything. So with that, of course, we've been plugging iTunes. So you can, of course, listen to us on iTunes. Mm-hmm. You can also find us on SoundCloud. Zing this. You can also find us on Facebook if you want to leave a comment there as part of our fan page. Yep, seeing this as well. You can find us on Twitter where we post stuff pretty frequently, actually, and that is at Zingness. Mm -hmm. You can find us on Instagram. Zingness Podcast. You can also find us on Twitch, where I will say the month of March is going to be... Bang, bang. Shoot them up. (laughs) I'm going to be probably playing mostly shooter games that month. Yes. And that will be also on the Xbox now, so... Yay, I figured out how to do the Twitch stuff on Xbox. We have love all around. Yes, so that will be definitely a lot of fun. If you want to help contribute to the to the cause here <laughs> and, and help us in that way, you can go to patreon.com slash zingness. And finally, if you want to email us directly, you can go to zingness at gmail.com. And as always, DJ Golden Boy, 89.